All right, you've had enough. Zero Suit stunned that stupid Nair to your shield 500 times in the last three minutes. There's seemingly no way to punish it, as her jab denies every single one of your attempts to do pretty much anything. What can be done besides holding shield to maybe get a punish on the jab if, oh, she just retreated? Time to just SD, I guess. We've all been there. Having to fight safe opponents will often feel like playing Smash against a brick wall. You can't do jack squat to them. Then, when you start seeing your damage build up little by little, the game just becomes unfun. That's why I'm here to help. These fellow viewers are my best tips and tricks for dealing with safe moves. The first step is to think productively, not destructively. Having the mindset of, this move is so safe, there's literally nothing I can do against it, not only serves to tilt you and make you play worse, but it completely dismisses the idea that there could potentially be some way to combat the attack. There are ways to work around safe spacing, one of which I'll demonstrate right now. The patience jump. I see top, high, and even mid-level players do this all the time because it's really just amazing at catching opponents off guard after they space something safe. Nobody's given it an official title, so I just like to call it the patience jump. Feel free to use whatever name you want though, that's not important. Okay, here's what it looks like. Focus on the guy with the red hat. I can't remember who he is for some reason. Now, what just happened was a very subtle interaction, but if you can truly learn to understand it, a big part of this game is going to make a lot more sense. So Fox did a landing neutral air on Mario in hopes of starting a combo. It didn't work out, so Fox quickly determined that Mario was most likely to grab in the situation, which makes sense, Mario loves grabs. Thus, he spot dodged, and here's where Mario made a very wise decision. Mario jumped to cover a wide range of options that Fox would have likely chosen after the nair whiff, and landed with an attack of his own after reacting to the punishable spot dodge. What most Marios might have done here would have simply been to go for the grab. Nair looks punishable, right? But that's exactly what Fox thought too, so he made the snap decision to spot dodge in anticipation of this very option. If the spot dodge was successful, who knows what kind of hefty punish Fox could have gotten. Now there is a chance that Fox could have chosen a different option after the Nair, like maybe shield to avoid a jab, roll which also dodges grab, grab, it might have been a lot of things. And it's kind of hard to guess which one, especially when fighting someone for the first time. But what's nice about the patience jump is that it covers all of these asterisk. Fox shields do either an empty land grab or shield pressure him. Fox rolls, react and punish it or try to corner him further. He grabs, landing neutral air will still do the trick. All Mario has to do is react. Is the patience jump starting to make sense now? It's totally amazing against safe spacers, and when I learned about it, my mind was seriously blown. Of course, you can apply the PJ against all kinds of safe moves like landing Palutena fair, Lucina fair, and Yoshi up air. But before you go on doing this all the time, like it's a magic pill that solves all spacing problems, I should note that there is a limit to how good it is. People can stuff jumps as you try to do it. Well, there goes that idea. Wait, what's this? Oh my gosh, I never realized. You can shield once people start attacking. My life is complete. Okay, but in all seriousness, this is usually the next step after patience jumps stop working. Most moves that stuff out a jump squat can be punished with shield. Jump comes out after three frames, so keep that in mind when determining if the opponent might use a move which can catch you during that time window. Some attacks can't stuff jumps, however, so simply use the patience jump against those instead. Now versus certain characters, you'll want to do one of these two strats more than the other. For example, Palu thrives off opponents who try to abuse the patience jump. The footage you're seeing should explain exactly why. Therefore, you should use your best judgment, have prior knowledge of the matchup, and go with your gut when deciding what to do. But please, for the love of all things that are good, don't be this guy. Look, unless the opponent's spacing is really, really bad, shield grabbing is just not gonna work out. The game wasn't made for that option to be good. There are deeper layers to the concept of patience jumping and shielding, but now's not really the time to get into that, and I'm sure you'll naturally learn them more as you get better with these tricks. Who knows, maybe I'll make a follow-up video on it someday. But for now, let's keep this ball rolling. So we've already gone over some of the most practical ways for punishing what the opponent does after they space something well, but what if I told you that some safe moves are actually totally punishable depending on your character. For example, there's Palutena's Nair. Yes, the move's clearly good. It's amazing even, but not unpunishable. Look, you see her coming towards me? Boom! Yoshi Nair. Dock up B, DK grab. This goes back to the point I made earlier about how you want to have a productive mindset when fighting good spacers. Lots of characters simply can deal with moves that are commonly misconceived to be safe. You just have to think for yourself a little. Mario is able to up smash just about anything that hits his shield from behind. Even if a move is technically unpunishable by turnaround grabbing, a very common punish option, 
he can still use Usus because that's a unique trait he has as a character. Another example of a character that can punish typically safe moves is Mr. Game & Watch. As much as I like to complain about it, he can deal with shield pressure from far distances. I'm not gonna just tell you to try and punish with something else because no, up be out of shield is clearly his best option in a bunch of scenarios. Do some research and planning before fighting the most popular spacing options. Is there a move you have that can punish it besides the move you want to land the most? Trust me, if I could punish every landing area with Yoshi forward tilt, I would. But I almost always just use Nair because it's a lot more realistic that I land one. Of course, you can punish with more favorable options if you parry, so as a quick little bonus tip, learn parrying. It's not overrated, it's godlike. When dealing with safe approaches, anticipation can really come in handy. Just about every low-level Roy loves to do a few dash dances, then run in with Nair. But if I expect the Nair, I can do lots of stuff to it, including this Ganon down air. Look, if Ganon can cover a pretty safe approach with down air, then anyone can learn how to deal with good spacing. Put that on a poster or something. Anticipation helps in other situations too. If you think Lucina's gonna land with a safe fare, move in closer to her and force her spacing to be unsafe. If you predict that Ike's gonna pressure with full hop nares, stuff out his jump before he can even attack. Being ready for the opponent's go-to option also increases your chances of successfully landing a parry, since he'll know exactly what move to work with. But then, how do you anticipate something? I mean, as long as you have a little bit of experience with the game, you should have a general idea of what the most popular characters are gonna look for at the different percent ranges. Luigi wants grabs at low percent, and Greninja wants down tilt at kill percent, for example. Now, as useful as these tricks are, don't try to punish moves that do end up being completely safe. Spoiler alert, you're not always going to be perfect, and opponents will successfully get away with good spacing sometimes. In that case, try your best to not fall for their bait. I've seen far too many situations where a Krom lands with a very safe fare from behind, the opponent still tries to back air it, then they get punished because of their recklessness. That's just one scenario, this kind of thing happens with tons of characters. Anyway, you usually want to either back off, or maybe punish in some super intelligent way if you're like 150% confident in what the opponent's gonna do. But there's no shame in not engaging. If a situation just makes you too uncomfortable to combat the opponent's spacing, it's okay to wait for another opportunity to fight them. Oftentimes, people will get impatient when their safe moves aren't doing anything for them, and will later pick more risky options instead. That's good for you, since it's a lot more fun to fight and easier to deal with. And there it is. Here's everything I talked about on screen, in case you forgot any of the major points. Fighting against safe attacks can be frustrating, especially when people know how to use them well. But like all things in Smash, it can be dealt with. Have patience, know when to challenge the opponent, and use your character's toolkit to your advantage. Hey, if you liked my video, you should consider subbing. I don't usually say this, but around 80% of my viewers are unsubbed. What do I need to do at this point? Eat a roach? Give away a can of tuna? You guys like tuna? Here, I made this tier list for my favorite Vocaloid composers last week when I was bored. Maybe that helps. Okay, but for real, whether y'all subscribe or not, you're pretty cool. This is still my favorite comment on any of my videos. Okay, bye.